demolition of the Rochester Institution drew quite the crowd. It's nuts. I like, they just go. Emily Verstrate is capturing a piece of the history by documenting demolition for a city youth project. But this is really cool, like being here, because I've never seen anything this big, like being torn apart. Even a city fire crew stopped by to catch a glimpse. Just ask a kid, this is the coolest thing ever. I want to see it all get knocked down because it would be like a great experience to see because I've never seen it before. So out with the old. You have to like get over that it's going to be knocked down. And in with the new. I know that there's like old memories here shopping at Wegmans, but then you got to make new memories at the new Wegmans. Demolition of the East Avenue Wegmans is expected to be complete by the end of March. In Rochester, Caroline Tucker, Fox First at 10. The new East Avenue Wegmans is expected to open on May 19th. Friends and family said a final goodbye today to beloved RIT professor Edlyn Chun. A memorial was held in her honor today at the St. Mark's and St. John's Episcopal Church on Culver Road. Chun died last month. Her body was found on February 6th, three days after police say she was killed in her home. Two people have been charged with her murder. Bringing you up to speed now, a 20-year-old man is headed to Strong Hospital tonight after he fell into a ravine near Geneseo. The Livingston County Sheriff's Office says the 20-year-old man was at the rim of the Fallbrook Gorge with a group of friends when he fell in. He was able to communicate with rescuers while he was trapped. He was down there for less than three hours. His injuries are unknown. And the power is back on in one Rochester neighborhood after a car crash took down two telephone poles. Rochester police say three men were in the SUV that lost control. It also hit a parked car and then slammed into the side of a brick house. They say it took about 30 minutes to get all the people out of that SUV. I saw when the car came this way, I guess it lost control when it hit the pole. When it hit that house, it flipped and hit that house and it landed upside down right there. The Red Cross is helping the people who live in the damaged home. Police have not identified the driver or the passengers. A Leroy electrician is in jail tonight. Police say he stole $50,000 worth of wiring while the electricity was still on. 28-year-old Michael Nicomento was arrested on burglary and larceny charges. Leroy police say he cut wiring to a warehouse, industrial plant, and other sites while high-voltage electricity was still flowing. Officers say the first theft happened last June and several more happened between October and February, both in Leroy and in the city of Rochester. Nico Mento is in jail on $25,000 bail. Further charges are possible. Rochester's arson task force arrested 35-year-old Jacqueline Levert for starting a house fire last July. They say she lit a tire on fire and those flames spread to a nearby home. No one was hurt in that fire and there was minimal damage. Levert is currently in the Monroe County Jail. And a fight may have led to a stabbing on the city's west side. Police say a 48-year-old woman was stabbed just after 8 p.m. last night on Joseph Avenue in Rochester. That victim was taken to Strong Hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Well, in just about four hours, we will spring ahead for daylight saving time. That means we will lose an hour of sleep, but gain an hour of sunshine too. Daylight saving time officially begins at 2 a.m. But changing your clocks isn't the only thing you remember, need to remember to do, according to firefighters. They say you should also use the time change to change your smoke detector batteries. Change the batteries, check them once a month, practice an exit drill, an Edith drill in your home, so that uh, especially with children know what the noise is, they know what to do. And again, if you have questions, contact your local fire department and, and we'll come and, and we'll, we'll make a host call and then and help you out. Fire departments also recommend changing the batteries in your carbon monoxide detector. Now, Rochester's most accurate forecast. We're springing ahead. Yes. It's kind of feeling like spring a little bit. Oh, it definitely will tomorrow. <laughs> we had temperatures today near 50. Tomorrow will be near 60. Before Great. We do have some changes on the way, though, for next week. It is, after all, still March. There's our next weather maker now moving into Michigan. I don't expect these showers to get in here until Monday afternoon. In the meantime, we have high pressure in control. That's giving us partly to mostly cloudy skies out there right now. And we'll expect those partly to mostly cloudy skies to stay throughout the night. For tomorrow, we'll see some sunny skies. And of course, temperatures in the upper 50s to near 60 go out and enjoy it because it turns cooler 
next week. We could be talking about some snow showers as early as Tuesday. More on that in just a minute, but right now, your overnight low near 30 degrees. Tina? All right, Amanda, thank you. Hundreds of people broke out their bell bottoms and platform shoes tonight. That's right. The ugly disco is now underway. The retro event is at the Rochester Riverside Convention Center for the 10th year in a row. This fun dance party is all about going all out to raise money for the Golisano Children's Hospital. There's plenty to do tonight, like live music, dancing, and even a good old-fashioned game of the retro or game Twister. Dozens of high school girls sat down with their mentors today at the Radisson Hotel for the first ever intergenerational all women's professional brunch. Its goal was to allow local female students to explore potential career paths. It also gave the students a chance to meet with accomplished women leaders in Rochester. I'm honestly excited uh, to see what these all older women have been through and everything. And it's very motivational as well, um, just so. We know because being a senior in high school, it's very hard to pick where I want to go in the future. And I'm going to be starting college um, a few months from now. And this is kind of, I feel like, going to be like an eye opener mm -hmm. and definitely an opportunity to experience. And it's going to be, I'm, I think it's going to be amazing. Monroe County Executive Maggie Brooks was the host of this year's brunch. Coming up here on Fox, a massive storm hits New England and sends this home over the edge, literally. And on Tuesday, over 100 Cardinals will be locked inside the Sistine Chapel to pick a new pope. We'll take an inside look at what goes on inside the papal conclave. And Syracuse must already think they're part of the ACC because the Orange didn't bother showing up for their last Big East game today. Thad Brown has the story later in Sports Extra. 